Hi, I'm Alex Willett. I'm a senior here at Baxter Academy, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the engineering pathway. Many students entering post-high school, college, or even career engineering programs struggle to find balance in both content and skill acquisition. The engineering pathway is designed as a rigorous, accelerated STEM program for students with strong interests in math, engineering, physical sciences, and computer science or software engineering. And in addition to learning content in courses such as calculus-based physics, chemistry, design, and computer science, students will also enhance their ability in these following areas. Reacting to challenges, seeing failure as a tool, task management, finding and seizing opportunities, working with limited information, and asking the right questions. Hi, I'm Jonathan Amory, the engineering teacher here at Baxter Academy. Right now, America has a problem. 60% of students who go to college to become engineers drop out of the major. That's because they're not prepared for the unique rigors of a college engineering program. And it's also why we created the engineering pathway and designed it backward, looking at the skills and knowledge students would need to be successful in college and career, and then creating a series of sequenced courses to get them to that point. The Baxter engineering pathway blends the theory of math, science, engineering, and with practical skills and hands-on projects so that students get a complete picture of what goes into these problems. At the Axe Engineering Pathway, students use their creativity and applied skills to solve complex problems. And Baxter Engineering Pathway graduates should expect to have college-level engineering, CAD, computer science, math, and physics courses under their belt before they even go into college. Students start off in ninth grade by learning a SOLIDWORKS, which is the industry standard CAD software. This uh, amazing tool can allow students to create complex parametric models, but it also has advanced, uh, uh, advanced tools such as topology and finite element analysis, so students can iterate and uh, optimize their designs to create better results. Once students have a good CAD model, they can then manufacture it, either by printing it in some of our 3D printers uh, this is just a suite of some of the printers we have. Or we actually have some more advanced 3D printers, such as this one here, which is designed to print polycarbonate, one of the strongest uh, thermoplastics, but one that's very, very difficult to print. This printer can also print two materials simultaneously, so you can make complex shapes such as living hinges. This machine over here can actually embed fiberglass um, into a nylon carbon fiber matrix, making incredibly strong, stiff parts. But 3D printing is just the beginning of things. We also have several 3D um, CNC routers, which can create these complex shapes and parts uh, by cutting it out of wood or metal. We have some laser cutters that can cut very, very precise shapes out of a range of materials. And recently we invested in a water jet, which can cut almost any material known uh, with very, very high precision and accuracy. For example, this ring gear that's going to be used on our next robot. In addition to making things, we also test our products. For example, this wind tunnel, which was constructed by a number of my engineering students a few years ago, has been really important in testing a number of student models. Students have tested everything from wind turbine blades to model homes designed to withstand hurricanes in this chamber. This wind tunnel is one of the most powerful in the state and can reach speeds in excess of 250 miles an hour, allowing students to test a range of products and applications. Baxter also has one of the strongest first robotics teams in New England. We've won six of our past seven district events, and we are the youngest team in the world to win all te six technical engineering awards. Our team has qualified for the world championships in every year that we've competed, and have even made it to the world championship finals. At the world championships, we get to compete from over, uh, with teams from over 30 countries from around the world. So it's a really exciting opportunity for our young engineers. Last spring, when the pandemic struck and ventilators were in short supply, our engineering students stepped up and designed this emergency ventilator. 
It was so successful that it was one of only seven finalists in a worldwide design challenge to build a ventilator, and one of the only ones to meet all 36 requirements for the ventilator challenge. The ventilator was featured on Good Morning America and the PBS NewsHour, and it's a good example of where our students step up when there's a real need. If you're interested in engineering or uh, related STEM fields, you should look at the engineering uh, design pathway and join our team. Here's what some of our students had to say. We're going to run through the operations of a Baxter ventilator. First, the manual settings. Here you can adjust the flow rate for medical air and oxygen to create a desired air mixture. There's a chart here for uh, given examples of oxygen percentages that are mixed through here, but they're also monitored through the machine. This creates redundancy. Pressures on the Baxter ventilator are set manually. One pressure you can set is the maximum plateau pressure. This has a range between 5 and 60 centimeters. You can also set your peak pressure. This is an amber regulator. However, if you don't have that available, the Baxter ventilator also provides a manometer, which measures the peep in centimeters of water. For electronically controlled settings, we look to the GUI, which adjusts the motor accordingly to provide the correct tidal volume, IDE ratio, and respiratory rate as specified here. As you adjust it to your desired settings, you then have to click Apply, at which point the motor will start running those settings. While the pressure and the oxygen were set manually, the GUI will also monitor them to make sure that we're achieving the desired levels. So while you plug in the desired settings, you must always remember to click Apply. The engineering pathway at Baxter has prepared me for college in more ways than one. From the start, you take more advanced classes with a workload targeted at STEM. And whether it was doing a lab with my friends in chemistry or building a trust in engineering, I've always felt like I was given a challenge in any class. And where I wasn't, I was given the skills to take initiative and tailor my learning to my own needs. Going off to college next year, I feel prepared for any challenge thrown at me, both in the classroom and in the workforce. Thank you for joining us here today, and I hope to see you include the engineering pathway as part of your future Baxter career.